Hello, wonderful. I'm here with Beverly Engel, and she has written, ready for it, 22 books around the topic or topic somewhere around the world of emotional abuse. She was the trendsetter, the, the starter, the, you know, the reason we use that term. And she, of course, she's been incredibly popular on uh, O Magazine with Oprah, Phil Donahue, Psychology Today, everybody, everyone wants a little piece of Beverly. <laughs> and so today we have a little piece of Beverly. Hey, Beverly, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. So last time we had such a good time. And um, so definitely if you've not listened to that podcast, you should as well. Uh, but we didn't really cover like what is emotional abuse. Okay. So what, yeah. how would you define emotional abuse? Yeah. Uh, let's uh, start with that. Um, it's actually any non-physical behavior typically uh, that is intended to demean control, subjugate, humiliate another person. Mm -hmm. uh, now there is a physical form of emotional abuse called symbolic violence. And that's when somebody like shakes his finger okay. or shakes his fist or slams the door or puts his fist through the wall. Mm -hmm. He hasn't hit you, it's not mm -hmm. battering, but it's a threat. It's okay? a scare tactic. It's right? a scare tactic, yeah. And yeah. so you know, he doesn't have to hit you to to scare the, the Jesus out of you, you know? Yeah, and that's such a big question. Oh, I, I didn't think I was being abused because I didn't have bruises. And right, it's like, right. if you saw two eight-year-olds and one was making the other feel afraid, you would recognize there was a problem with that. Right, right. But then it's like, somehow it's okay yeah. because you're married? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or even more important, if the other, if one kid was humiliating the other, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I've this book that I've written recently. Uh, the subtitle is "Healing Your the Shame You Don't Deserve," because shame is such a huge component of emotional abuse. Um, yeah, so that yeah, I want to make sure they so escaping emotional abuse is the name yes. of that one, right? Yes, and then yes. the subtitle is "Healing the Shame." Healing the shame you don't deserve. Uh, oh, yeah, because that's really, in a nutshell, what emotional abuse is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, the emotional abuser wants to shame you and humiliate you into believing that you're stupid or ugly or too fat or not a good wife or not a good mother. You know, he wants to shame you. That's how he controls you. That's his major tool for control is to shame you and demean you and make you feel small. Mm -hmm. And then he can feel big. Then he can feel in charge. And I do, I know you, like, I want to point out from what you're saying, it's, it's a control problem, not a communication problem. Absolutely. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cause we get it really confused and you go to like a couple's therapist or you go to a pastor mm. or something like, Oh, you need to work on your communication issues. Uh, and it's uh, like, uh, uh. No, that's uh, not the, the problem. Yeah. And as you know, I'm sure it's not recommended to go to no. a therapist as a couple when you're mm -hmm. either being emotionally or physically abused mm -hmm. um, because of that. Re one reason for sure is that they're focused on communication, which is not the problem. In a couples therapy, correct me if I'm wrong, but in couples therapy, the relationship is the patient. Right. 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 Yeah. Versus, right. oh, I'm going to, I think there's this idea, like I'm going to go finally get them to the therapist and the therapist is going to be the person to save me because they're, they're going to point, they're obviously going to see what's happening. They're going to show yeah. him that he's wrong. They're going to be able to convince him. And he's going to say, in the case of male, female, you know, they're going to say, right. he's going to say, oh, what? <laughs> what? Right. Oh, I've right. been controlling you all these years. Well, yeah. let me change that right now. And I mean, we and may... in fact, yeah. And in fact, the opposite happens That's often. Right. Oh yes. When, they... when a couple goes and the, if it's a male therapist in particular, although I'm not picking on males because it mm -hmm. happens with female therapists, the, the, the abuser will present himself self in such a wonderful way to the therapist that the therapist often will see the victim as being the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, why don't you speak up? Why aren't you more assertive? You know, why do you allow him to do that? You know, Golly, so, so it's the worst thing in the world is to go to a couple's therapist for, a, for if you're being abused, it's not the, a relationship problem. Like you said, yeah. it's, it's his problem. It's also not your problem. There are things you can do 
and I recommend things to do, but it's not your problem. You never cause him to be abusive. It is never your fault that he's unhappy. Uh, we talked in the last segment about how abusers always make it their partner's fault if they're unhappy. And it's not your fault. It's his job to make himself happy, not your job to make him happy. So important. And that is what we covered yeah. in, in, in the last the last episode. Uh -huh. So I think that's step one from your book, yes. right? Step, step one in the program, the, the uh, kind of de-shaming yourself program sure. uh, is to stop believing the abuser. Mm -hmm. Stop believing that he's always right. That mm -hmm. he's that the things that he's telling you is right. Uh, step two is about giving yourself permission to be angry. Women especially, and we've already said that men can be abused too, but mm -hmm. we're going to focus more on women here. Women especially have a very hard time being angry. Okay, uh, it may be because they had a very abusive father who was a rageaholic and who screamed and yelled or they had a very enraged mother and they don't wanna be like their enraged parents. Uh, or they may have become afraid of anger because they would see somebody being angry and then all of a sudden be, become abusive. So they've equated anger with abuse and they don't ever wanna be abusive. You know, in the typical battered women's situation, the children watch as the father batters the mother. And it's the same with emotional abuse and the children unconsciously make a choice and they say, I don't ever want to be like him or I don't ever want to be like her. Mm -hmm. Now, if they say, I don't ever want to be like her, I don't ever want to be a victim. Mm -hmm. They often become abusive themselves. But a typical female watching it will say, I don't ever want to be like him. I don't ever want to be abusive. So there's a lot of obstacles in the way of giving yourself permission to be angry. But it's an important step. You need to allow yourself to be angry. You, we don't expect you to get angry at him right away if you've never done it. It's about giving yourself permission just to be angry at all. Okay. And I really want to zero in. You probably heard me like jump, like yeah, saw me like right, jumping right. around there. He's doing video, right. which is funny. Here's I, I moved before Beverly and I got on camera. I moved because of the shadows in the room, and uh -huh. really, and here I am again, like a tiger stripe. <laughs> but that's okay. Those of you listening on podcast just know that I have tiger stripes again, like light, light field tiger stripes. Uh, but the that that point because that's really so many women. I want they want their children to see them as loving and whatever. Yes. Obviously. And that's a really important point to make that if you, they, they see him as powerful mm -hmm. and you as powerless, yes, the chances of them aligning with him at some point down right. the road are much higher because he yes. seems safer than you. Yes. yes. Because you, he is powerful and you are yeah. powerless and yes. it is the most heartbreaking thing in the world. Yes. And in fact, they get angry at the victim, the mother, typically, As, because oh, she didn't leave. It's heartbreaking. heartbreaking. They, they carry much more anger toward the, the victim than the abuser because oh. they're enraged because she didn't leave. She didn't protect them. They see her as weak and they don't ever want to be weak like that. So, yeah, it's horrible. Uh, so you need to be able to get to, in touch with your own anger. Uh, and you can start just by writing. I'm angry that I'm angry because writing about what, how his behavior makes you feel, mm -hmm. you know, I'm angry when he does this. I get angry when I do that. Yes, we know that you're also hurt, but right now we're focusing on anger. I'm, I get angry when he does this. I'm angry that he's done that. I'm angry that, and then you can go for a drive in your car mm -hmm. and just talk out loud as if you're talking to him. Uh, be careful with your driving. You might want to park, <laughs> park away, park, park up to the side of the street if you get really emotional, but just give yourself a permission to talk to him as if he was right there. You know, you can do it in your living room when he's not there and no one's around. Pretend he's there, you know, pick up a magazine and roll it up and just swat the tape, the, the table or the couch every once Tree in a while. Tree outside, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Just get to some anger. Yeah. Have you seen the levels of energy? I think it's like, um, it's called like, le like levels of energy, but it's, uh, 
it's more of a coaching strategy than a therapy strategy. Uh-huh. But, I mean, it talks about like the levels of energy and all this like love and enlightenment is up here, but then you have apathy down here at the bottom and uh-huh. anger is somewhere in the middle and people yeah. want, they're apathetic for years, putting up with stuff yeah. and they want to jump to love and enlightenment yeah. and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And so you have to get through anger because there is more energetic energy yes. or whatever in anger yeah. than there is an apathy. Apathy is yeah. at the bottom. And most right. people who've been in abusive situations have checked out for yes. a good reason. Absolutely. They checked Absolutely. out for a good reason. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, one of the reasons why it, you need to give yourself permission to get angry because it's empowering. It's Woo! empowering. Yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. it's motivating. It's yeah. motivating. You know, if you Whatever you decide you you need to do, anger will help motivate you to get there. It'll help you find your voice. I mean, we talk talk about finding our voice. Mm -hmm. It'll help you find your voice finally. So whatever you can do to help yourself be angry. Again, you don't ever have to do it in front of him. You don't have to tell him you're angry yet if you're not ready for that. But just work on it yourself, for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... For your children, that that point. And for your children, absolutely. Yeah, uh, we've both seen that so many times. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the most unfair situation in the entire world. But absolutely. You can see why. If a kid, a small child, defenseless child is hoping to feel safe, yeah. the person who appears more powerful yeah. feels more safe. Yeah. It's yeah. the most unfair thing in the world. But if that's yeah. not a reason to connect with your anger, I don't know what is because that absolutely. is your babies are worth it. So what absolutely. is number three? What is number three? <laughs> well, three is about self-compassion. And we've been hearing more about self-compassion in the last several years. Uh, but before that, we didn't even know what it meant. You've got uh, a but, ton of stuff about self-compassion on yes, your website too. That'd yes. be a great resource for yeah. people looking into um, that. Yeah. If we can't get in touch with how we're feeling and feel badly for ourselves. I'm not talking about having a pity party. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about acknowledging what has happened to you, acknowledging your suffering. That's what self-compassion is. Mm. It's acknowledging your suffering. Uh, If you, if you're going to keep pretending that it's not bothering you, it's not getting to you, it's not hurting you, it's not hurting your children, then you're not going to get anywhere. So you need to really delve deep and, and recognize how his, his or her emotional abuse has caused you to suffer. Mm-hmm. You can start making a list of the incidents of emotional abuse. I, I encourage that for everybody, I'll, you know, one of the first steps, get a journal and write down all the incidences as they happen of what he said or what he did and include how it made you feel. Hmm. because it's self-compassion requires you to connect with your emotions. And like you just said, most people have checked out by now. Most people are numb to, after they've been emotionally abused. Hmm. So it's going to be a practice to help you get in touch with what you're feeling. So uh, and I'm sure you've seen this too, right? And that people want to just skip that. They, I mean, they truly yeah. want to go from numb and then yeah. it's like, you know, they'll come and talk to you and it's like, oh, I'm having a great day today and I'm just so hopeful and I'm this. And it's, yeah. it's like, whoa, yeah. like three days ago, you know, you were here. Yeah. And that, that is yeah. part of the process. Can you speak to that a little bit yeah. about, you know, yeah. how it, we can't just jump from the deepest dark to the lightest light? Yes, yes. Uh, you, you reminded me earlier today about um, an exercise I have on the website, Heal My Shame. Uh, about how we have an investment in staying in denial. And it's very, it was very so powerful. good. I was, yeah. the email and I was like, I want to talk about yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it often starts with being in denial about your own childhood history. Mm. There's mm. often a connection. I'm not saying that every person who's emotionally abused was abused as a child. I'm not saying that at all. There are many healthy women and men who are being emotionally abused and they don't have a history like that. Okay, because if, if we say that that's always the cause, then we're again kind yeah. of blaming the victim. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and we're not recognizing that anybody can be a victim of emotional abuse. You can be, you can have a great job, a great career, you can be beautiful, you can be smart, you can have tons of friends, you can have tons of support and still be emotionally abused, mm-hmm. okay? But one of the culprits here is, is our denial. We want to pretend and deny that things are better than they are. Mm. 
And that's what where self-compassion comes in. We need to connect with our suffering so that we can heal our suffering. Mm -hmm. we, we, can, we can't keep pretending that it didn't happen and actually heal. The only way to heal, like you said, is to go through. Mm -hmm. We have to go through the pain, go through the acknowledgement of what happened to us to get to the other side. And well, we and don't want to. We no. don't want to feel that. <laughs> and, and people probably come to you too and they're saying, well, yeah. I want toxic people not to bother me anymore. Or they're say, or they'll say things like I was on a call today and she said, you know, I keep getting triggered by my ex-boyfriend. I said, that's not triggers. He's abusing you. Like you're yeah. not, yeah. you aren't the problem. It's not right, that you're right. getting triggered. Like you're getting right. abused and it bothers right. you. And you right. like noticed. That's not a trigger. Right. Yes, yes, <laughs> that is yes. not a trigger, right? right, right. Um, and yeah, so any other advice to that? And that is just something I see so often. And, and they want, and they try to meditate it. Yeah. That's the newest thing. Let me just meditate yes. it away. Yeah, yeah, no. Or we medicate do everything, it away. Yeah, we do everything possible not to feel our pain, okay? Because we, we either don't think we can handle our pain we're in the habit of pushing our pain away. As a child, it may not have been safe to feel your pain, okay? So to give yourself permission to feel your pain is a big step. It's a huge, huge step to take. Um, but, a, you know, uh, Kristen Neff, who was the yeah. person who really started all the research on self-compassion, said that, you know, um, if you see a child or another person suffering, you're, if you're a healthy person, your heart's going to go out to them. You're going to feel empathy for them. You're going to feel compassion. You're going to want to help them. Why don't we do the same thing for ourselves? Mm -hmm. If we're suffering, if we're hurting, why doesn't our heart open up and we feel compassion for ourselves and want to help that, help, help ourselves heal that wound? We need to make that connection with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it can be very hard if you've never done it. You know, if it's always, if your focus is always outside, always helping others, always being there for everybody else and not being there for yourself, it's a very difficult step to make. So there's, there's kind of other steps along the way, like self-kindness is connected to self-compassion. That's another step. We're typically not kind to ourselves. In fact, we're typically pretty to terrible to ourselves. I'm pretty you know? kind that I have tiger stripes now. I mean, really, <laughs> this is a pretty good example, right? It's like I've been prepared for our interview, right, I was right. researching you, and then I moved three times before yeah, our yeah. call to make sure right. that my lighting was good. Yeah. And then here I am with tiger stripes. And it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Right? You know, I'm not going to get off that. It's funny to point yeah. out. But, but it is right. the little things you can have compassion. Like, there's no like, yeah. oh, I ruined that. And yeah. it, no one's ever going to benefit because I, my lighting's yeah. wrong. Everybody's going to be focused. No, you're not focused on my lighting. You don't care. You're listening to the amazing things. Right. Exactly. Really exactly. It's fine. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's one voice we have is to worry about things like that. Yeah. But the major voice we have is that self-critical voice. Yeah. Is that inner critic, which we hear so much about. So um, if someone is good enough, if, they, if there's that, that running take of not good enough. Uh, right. Are you talking about imposter syndrome with there, or is that something like, can you speak to that just a bit? It's more than the imposter syndrome. Imposter okay. syndrome is a, is a good thing, but it's not what we're talking about. It's a constant criticism, you know, about everything, oh, not every single thing, but most things that you do. Uh, I didn't do it good enough. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't listening enough. I wasn't a good mother. I wasn't this, I wasn't that. Um, and, and Kristen Neff talks about creating a nurturing inner voice, mm. okay? We have a critical inner voice. All of us have it, some more than others. But she talks about creating a nurturing inner voice mm -hmm. where you go inside and you tell yourself positive things. And she talks about an exercise where you think about, pick a, pick a figure in your, uh, like, a, like a fictional figure, a figure yeah. on TV, uh, or, or somebody who was real in your life, mm -hmm. who was loving and kind and caring. And think of the things they said to you mm -hmm. and go inside yourself and begin to say those words. Use the words that somebody else said to you that were so healing. Use them now for yourself. Okay, I did that exercise at a workshop. They asked you to pick a figure or pick a person who was kind. I couldn't think of any people, but um, I picked the Glenda the Good Witch in the Wizard of Oz. Husband. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, great, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, it's a little salt yeah. pepper shake.
caretaker of uh, Dorothy and Glenda right that's there. Great, so, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she had this oh my high voice and was so loving and pretty. And I picked her. You know, it was a funny thing to start with, but that's what I picked. That was my idea of somebody who was compassionate and sweet and loving, you know, and I used her. Some people will use a pet that, you know, pet doesn't talk, but they think about the pet and how loving a pet can be, you know, and, and what, and they use the voice, like what voice do you use when you talk to your pet? Mm -hmm. Okay. You use this high pitched voice usually. Oh, aren't you sweet? Little girl? Hmm. What a good, blah, 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 blah. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> good. Yeah. No, that's so, good. So yeah. what about doing some of that with you? Oh, aren't you good? You're a good girl. You did, you did such so good today. You were so loving to your children, you know, whatever can mm. work for you to mm -hmm. be loving toward yourself. And mm -hmm. it's a huge step, mm -hmm. but it's very, very powerful. That's wonderful. Yeah. I love yeah. that strategy. And, yeah. and we can put that in the show notes because that is definitely yeah. something I was going through her website that I latched yeah. onto that. And I was like, yeah. that, I, I want to talk about yeah. the denial yeah. piece and then that. So that, yeah. those are great resources. Yeah. Um, awesome. So what is the other, there, is there the, one the, more step? Yeah, there's one more step and that's yeah. self-forgiveness. Yeah. Uh, and like you talked about, you know, in terms of forgiveness in general, we think we can go from apathy to forgiveness or from being hurt to forgiving other people. And we can't until we go through the anger. It's the same thing with self-forgiveness. We have to reach self-understanding first. Instead of anger, the comparable thing is self-understanding. Why am I here? Why, why did I pick this person? Am I repeating a pattern? Mm -hmm. uh, do I have such horrible low self-esteem when I got involved with this that I couldn't speak up? Uh, it's not self-blame. It's mm -hmm. self-understanding. It's I say you have to know yourself to grow yourself. That's my, oh, that's good, my little tagline. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So self-forgiveness is needing to forgive yourself for getting involved with the person in the first place. Mm -hmm. You need to forgive yourself for any actions you took that were not so great. I mean, because of emotional abuse is so horrible. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of maybe drinking, maybe even drugs, maybe even extramarital affairs. You know, victims do all kinds of things to cope. Okay. Maybe becoming emotionally abusive to your children. Mm -hmm. So you need to forgive yourself for any actions you took as a result of the abuse. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's important. And you need to get to self-understanding to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Why did I go down that route? Okay. <laughs> Also, something you cannot skip, and and uh, you know the piece that you know how were your best pieces used against you, right? Yes, like yes. overly kind, overly compassionate, overly loyal, overly worried about everyone that's else's needs. That's a great one. Yours, right? That's a great one. Yeah, I didn't talk enough about that. Oh, yeah, they're used good. to me hearing about that. Okay. <laughs> that's my big thing, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. how are your best yeah. pieces used against you? Because yeah. Um, I think Purdue did a, a study and it was 63% of women basically were too agreeable and conscientious. Uh, it was only 37% yeah. that really truly would fit like a codependency model. Um, that's huge that, because yes, how much yes. of the research is like, we think right. we're all codependent and it's right. like, yeah. no, that, that's not, that's not yeah. the case. Ah, yeah. okay, Beverly, you're going to have to come back yeah. on again. Uh, yeah. So we've, we've already got another agenda. Um, <laughs> right. So that's awesome. Tell them where they can find more about you. Uh, tell them about your new book coming out um, and where to find a okay. little more Beverly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Escaping Emotional Abuse is coming out at the end of December. They can get it on Amazon or any any online store, hopefully even independent bookstores, if we can ever go to the store again. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they can reach me directly by email, but with Beverly at beverlyangle.com or there's connections through my websites, um, heal your shame, heal my shame.com or beverlyangle.com. Uh, so they can reach me any of those ways. And I will make sure and include all that in the show notes. So if you look in, if okay. you're seeing this on YouTube, you can put it in the description, you know, you'll see okay. it in the description or in okay. the show notes of the podcast. Beverly, okay. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Truly, you. thank you for your work over the last 35 years in this space yeah. and, and being, um, you know, even saying the words emotional abuse, I can't imagine 35 years ago, like what a hard barrier that was to break through. So I right. just right. really appreciate well, your work and your, you. and your legacy. Thank you. And I appreciate people like you doing these great podcasts. You're a great interviewer. Love your spirit. Thank you. you. you Lovey Bancroft said the same thing. All right. <laughs>
right. And I told Patricia Evans, I said, I'm going to be your best interview since Oprah. <laughs> so the Oprah well, had better lighting. Her. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody <laughs> knows in the podcast. No, this yeah. will go video too. I don't care. I am. I mean, I have embraced my imperfections. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I am. I have embraced my imperfections. Yes. And uh, yes. if it, if somebody, you know, this, if somebody looks too good to be true, they probably are. So if right, you can't right. see any any right. little little things, they're not really right. human, or they're trying too hard to cover. Absolutely, absolutely. So awesome, <laughs> Beverly. Thank you so much for helping You're us welcome. on our journey to become toxic person proof. Okay, thank you.